I have good news. Uh. My Babalao has assured me <laughs> that sirens are going to be off the road very soon. <laughs> How would that stop the strike? <laughs> <laughs> but the question again is. As they say, how did we get to this sorry pass? When I was in secondary school, my governor saw my our former governor Sam Bakwe saw was my classmate in secondary school. So now imagine the governor has his son in the public secondary school. So he will be interested in what happens in our public schooling exactly. system. Just to buttress exactly. what you are saying, exactly. I was a product of public school, and I I think that. Some people see it. We've had cases of resolving issues, domestic violence, because husband has decided to send the children to public school, and then hell is let loose. So we need to do something. Then we must create that enabling yeah. environment, at least for people to have that feeling. I was a product of public school, and I think that we need to do a lot in ensuring that we do. I, 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 two of you were product of public schools. Thank mm. God for you. I was not a product of public school. I was. Well, so what, three of but, what, but even in the non-public school, <laughs> yes, in the class were the children of ministers, children of a washerman. I went to Catholic secondary school, oh, Catholic schools all Catholic my life, school. and in those schools, uh, I, I think in my, my contemporary at the time, Chief Antonio Nahoro was uh, um, federal minister, federal commissioner, as we call him. This is his son was there. Trimnell's son was there. This was your man's son was there. This is one class in Loyola College in Ibadan back uh, in those days. Nobody actually knew whose father was a washerman. Oh. Unfortunately, we couldn't ignore the fact that this fellow's father's name was on the news every day, but he was just another kid in the class. And so you had to ensure that you gave everybody same quality. Oh. What is happening in our country is that with those who have power, taking their children out of the system, the system is not being taken care of. Uh, the people who are now sending their children no, they to first, schools. They first have to destroy the public schools. Mm. So again, corruption comes in. How then are we going to make sure? Because if we don't get them to rebuild our public institutions, mm. we'll keep coming back. Because they don't have an interest. If they ask lecturers like, let this strike continue. We have had it. We have had strikes that have lasted six months, mm -hmm. one year yeah, in this country. No, that's why uh, Ghana, Togo, all of them are full of Nigerians. Yes. And the main reason mm -hmm. is not quality of education, mm -hmm. is to ensure that they can graduate in four years. Mm -hmm. So if we don't sort this out to ensure that they have an interest in public schools, in public institutions, the hospital doctors, resident doctors are also on their own strike mm -hmm. in all manner because they don't have a stake in all of these public institutions. Mm. They don't care. They don't even know the calendar year anymore. Cal our academic calendar years have changed. Before it used to be September to June, mm -hmm. sacrosanct. But now, in December, you hear people saying, I'm in third term. I thought December was first term. <laughs> it used to be. He, so all of that has changed. So it was not them, though. In our time, before it reversed. But the point I'm trying to make is that it has been so just, distorted <laughs> that what you thought you knew is are. no longer what it is. Yeah. Now, how do we move from here to make sure that the one of the policies is we should initiate a public but, policy? But I think a very important first step is that the labor, the grievance process needs to be rethought in Nigeria. I really think that the labor grievance process has become a joke. Because the only time you even get a listening is when you go on strike. That's, That's the first step yes. to getting a listening. That's because the thing is faulty. I think people, we need to retool the Ministry of Labor completely from top to bottom and change their mindsets in terms of how we engage in these matters. We need to rework planning because one of the first things you must do when you reach any collective bargaining agreement, I mean, some of us managed in industry, is you immediately domesticate the agreement into the planning process. And obviously, somebody is forgetting to do that, which is why it always surprises people that these costs are there when an agreement was reached. The day an agreement is reached, the consequence for the budget process must be taken and the Ministry of Labor must transmit immediately to the Ministry of Finance, must transmit to the planning process, and we need to work these things through. In fact, we should not be able to reach an agreement until those agencies have given their input into the consequence 
and it be, it's part of the negotiation. And that, that also brings the, to the fore the issue of we have this agency called Revenue Mobilization Allocation Committee, and you begin to wonder what is it that they are doing? Because if all of these are captured, because it's part of the building, of, it's part of the building build up process yeah. to the budgeting process. Mm -hmm. Take it back again. I do not know who supervises the Revenue Mobilization Allocation Committee. And so we should be even interrogating why is it that lecturers are paid this amount, mm -hmm. doctors are paid this amount, yeah. civil servants are paid this amount, legislators are paid this amount. Where are our priorities? I think, sorry, sound the mm. love, Prof, what you said, mm. strike has always been the last option. You know, because. Oh, sure, it should it, be the last it, option. It, yes, yeah, the last option. But you just find out that it's like swimming against the tide when you need to start going through negotiations and everything. So that is why I, I also think that there should be an overhaul of the whole system. And then we need to, we, we must ensure that the Minister of Labor, like, you, like you've said, should leave up to uh, its so, responsibilities. And like the that. revenue that you have also yes. mentioned, Charles. So is, in, in the private is, sector, uh, serious managers in the private sector, actually do an annual survey of remuneration in the economy. Especially in their industry. Yes. Manufacturing remuneration, banking remuneration, this is... And then you take a position for your particular organization within your industry, within a broader economy, with relativities. Look, I'll give an example. 40 years ago, HR managers were people you just found something for. We are tired of using them in... Uh, as secretary, send them to HR or something like that. And then we discovered, wait a minute, one of the most important management tools today is the quality of your human capital. Today, human resource managers are some of the highest paid executives in the industry. Yeah. This completely changed in Europe, in North America, completely changes the trajectory. So you begin to reprogram how you compensate people in HR to get the very best people to go into HR. And with this service across industry, you do your own and you anticipate what your negotiations will be like, you take a position. I think that government is no different. Government should be able to do a survey of compensation in similar economies with similar kinds of incomes and all of those kinds of things and different parts. What are the relativities between doctors and politicians in Malaysia? What are the relativities in the US? If politicians in Nigeria are lopsidedly paid relative to doctors compared to the United States, compared to Obviously, there will be a suboptimal outcome in the Nigerian environment. And so we need to redress these things. If politicians just suck up income to themselves because they have temporary power, they're inviting a revolution. They're inviting a society that will not produce appropriately. And so we need to begin to engage these kinds of issues and to find the kinds of solutions that will prevent us from going down a different kind of path. So, Ministry of Labor is a serious Ministry of Labor. One of the first things it must do is work its relativities and publish them. You know. And like what Prof is saying, my own fear, my phobia really is the rage of the poor. Because one day, when politicians take everything, suck up everything, and you feel that when you go and ask for votes, you don't need these people, one day, well, I'm looking at that, that would be the, the, I'm part that, of, the I'm part rage of why of this poor. is also more worrisome. Is that at the end of every year, at the beginning of every year, we come to see that our budgeting process, we hear 75% allocation to recurrent expenditure, 25 to capital expenditure. And yet you can't pay salaries of workers. So where is this recurrent expenditure? What is it going into? What are, what are the components of this? We earn so much. We budget about 6 trillion naira per annum. And we spend 75 so we need to interrogate on recurring process. We and need yes, to interrogate I think all that process. The solution to this problem, we, we have, I think we have processes. We have structures. We do. But there's an attitudinal problem. Uh. And no matter the structures and processes we put in place in Nigeria, and the attitude to run that processes and structures are not there, then we are going nowhere. So the first is to, this is the season of restructuring uh -huh. seminar. We have to restructure our mindset. Change of mindset. We have to restructure our attitude. Change. Because no matter the process mindset, we put in place, attitude. Once the right attitude is not there, we are not going anywhere. How can we mm. put government under pressure to get all these things? Well, let's match. Mm. Uh, women are right. So let's match the national assembly uh, uh, and yeah. pull out their children from private okay. schools. There must be a great okay. movement. While movement. Joe and Ambrose are planning their match, I'll go and restructure my brain. <laughs>
According to the gang, the Ministry of Labor should pay more attention to workers' issues and resolve them promptly before things lead to a strike. Also, once a collective agreement is reached, costs related to that agreement should be submitted to the Ministry of Finance and included in the budget planning process. Well, that's all that we have time for today. Thank you for joining us on Patito's Gang. Join the conversation. Follow us on all our social media pages displayed right there on your screen. I am Nenna Jimye. Until next time, take care and be well.